Hi, I'm Jake with ViewRail, and today we're going to be mounting our surface mount posts. Let's see what we'll need to start our project. Um, obviously, first we need a post. Uh, we need four inch post mounting screws. Uh, these are a structural screw, um, stainless, highly recommended to use in exterior projects or case hardened uh, for interior. Uh, we're also going to need washers. Um, this is to keep our powder coat from breaking on the foot when we drive our structural screws in. Uh, we'll need a tape measure, shims, composite, comes with the order. It's good for exterior or interior, uh, but I just had some, some regular framing shims here that I'm going to use today. Uh, foot cover, post level, comes with the installation kit, a dead blow or regular hammer, and an impact driver with a T30 bit. Um, I highly recommend using an extension so that we can keep our drill from scratching up the post when we're installing. Uh, that's a pro tip for you. So first off, um, we need to lay out our deck, um, measuring off the side of the, the edge of the deck um, generally is what people do, um, going in like an inch and a half or wherever our center is. Uh, making that point at each side of the deck, then chalking lines in order to get a center line for our post. So um, I've already done that uh, ahead of time. Uh, after you do that, you're going to place your post down, mark the four corners, make sure that there's blocking underneath uh, ahead of time, and then we're going to pre-drill those with the 3 16th inch bit. Um, so since we're using 5 16th GRKs that are four inches long, I'm going to drill about three and a half to three and three quarter deep uh, in order for our framing material not to split when we're driving these structural screws in. Uh, that's really important to make sure that your system is strong enough and will pass the um, 200 pound of lateral force code that is required when installing any railing. So um, as you can see here, I've already uh, pre-drilled the holes for this post. Uh, so I know where those go. So I simply have to place the post uh, onto my pre-drilled holes and uh, go ahead and lightly uh, or snugly populate all four corners. If you for some reason do not have blocking underneath the entire area, like you haven't packed it out with a triple two by, um, you can use these center holes, uh, but highly recommended that we use the four corner holes when doing this. Um, to make it easier for install and stronger uh, as an overall system. So uh, I'll go ahead and grab four GRKs and I'll put my washers on. Again, we really want to do this with a powder coated post. Uh, if you have a stainless post um, that is not powder coated, there's no reason to, to use these washers as they're just to keep this rough side of the structural screw from breaking that powder seal. One, two, three, and four. So there's no point in really trying to level this post until we figure out how it sits naturally in its environment, uh, which is why I don't deal with that until I get all four screws in, uh, just like this. I'm just going to take them so they're snug, I'm not going to go crazy on them on all four sides. Probably could have pre-drilled a little bit more on that one. I'm going to loosen it up just a hair. Right. Now that the post is sitting in its natural uh, position, uh, just snugged on each side, I'm going to go ahead and use my post level in order to level this. I'm going to put this all the way at the top um, because this is going to show the most out of level rather than at the bottom. Uh, there's not really a chance for it to be out of level. So this is going to give me the most accurate reading if I come all the way up top here. I'm just going to set my rubber band around here. And if you want to have a two foot level, if you think that's easier, um, 
that's going to be a little bit more accurate than this one as well. Um, you can go ahead and use that. But um, this one does come with the installation kit and makes it pretty quick. So um, now that I have my post on and it's in line, I can check level on both sides of my post in order to plumb this up properly. And this side, you can see we're looking really good. Um, not quite perfect, but a little bit better than this side where my bubble is actually touching the line. And so I need to choose which side I want to start with. Um, there's no point in really unscrewing all four holes and then populating um, because it's just a lot harder in, in my experience uh, installing all this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this side. My post needs to go this way in order for that bubble to come back. If I kind of slightly pull on the post while it's up here, you can see how that bubble's moving over. So because I need my post to come this way, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these two screws and shim. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So this is about where I want to shim it to. So I'm going to go ahead and put a composite shim, or actually, sorry, just a, a normal framing shim under here. So, and I'm going to take it a little bit past where it needs to go so that when I drive it down, it'll compress the shim a little bit and take me to level. There's just a hair more with this one, right? See how I'm slightly off of center here. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. All right, looks like I didn't use quite enough shim on that one, so I'm simply just going to loosen again. I'm going to use my hammer this time to give myself a little bit more. And that's pretty close. I'm going to maybe come back to that, but now I'm going to go ahead and move over and focus on my other side uh, because we can potentially shim in an area that will, will help this one while we're shimming this side perfect. Uh, let's see how that affected us. It looks like we need to come this way, um, which might be a little bit tricky um, seeing that I have some trim right here, but I'm going to go for it anyways. All right, so uh, I finished um, slightly loosening and tightening these screws uh, and adding shims uh, on this specific example, just on this side, but you can notice it's a little offset. I was able to, to shim just here to be able to get both of my lines level. Um, we can see here our bubble is pretty close to the, the center there, as well as on this side. That's what we're looking for. Um, if you want to double check it with the two foot level, uh, you can feel free to do so. Uh, but at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and cut my shim. Um, now ahead, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take a knife and I'm just going to score my shim a couple times. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pop it like so. It's not super clean. You can come back with it. The foot cover is going to cover up any of this stuff at the end. And here is my number one pro tip, is that as soon as you get a post leveled, go ahead and put a foot cover on it. That way I know that it's all done, completely level, and uh, I'm not gonna have someone else on the job site coming around and messing with the post. But mainly the reason I do that is um, if I forget to put one of these on um, before I string all of my cable or rod, etc. Uh, it's going to be a huge pain to remove all of that infill and then put this on. So uh, I would say if you're doing this on a regular basis or just as a one time off, just make it a, a point to put that foot cover on as soon as possible. Um, I generally just drop them from the top rather than trying to keep them from getting the powder getting scratched up. Uh, I find that this works really well. And now we're all done.
ready to go ahead and move on to any other posts in our run. I usually start with any corners or terminations and then move my way in. So that's how we install a surface mount post. Uh, next, we're gonna go to quick slide handrail. Uh, check out the other videos if you have not already.